Hi, my name's Lily, and I'm here in the Spooner Demonstration Garden. I'm the garden manager, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of the plants that I've been working on growing this year. Um, so most of the vegetables that I'm going to be showing you are all American Seed Selection varieties that you can purchase on their website. Any that aren't, I'll let you know. And most of our seeds we started um, in the springtime in our greenhouse and then transplanted into the ground. So to start, we've got our supermoon pumpkins right here. Um, they're called the supermoon because of their white color and then also they grow very large, up to 50 pounds some of them. Um, up next, we have some pepitas pumpkins and these pumpkins are popular because they have um, a hullless seed. Um, so they don't have that sort of white casing around the seed that, I don't know, is hard to chew and nobody really wants to eat. Um, up next, we have some cover crops grown here. Um, cover crops help maintain soil quality. Um, <clears throat> they aren't for plant yield. How they help maintain soil quality is by holding soil and nutrients in place and um, preventing weeds. So first we have some daikon radishes. These work great because as you pull them out of the ground, they really break up the soil and as you can see, cover everything really well so you're not gonna get well-grown weeds in there. Um, another cover crop we grew is ryegrass. Ryegrass is good because it's actually allelopathic, which means that it sends chemical signals into the ground, preventing um, other plants from growing. So, Something important to keep in mind with ryegrass being allelopathic, we also decided to use some ryegrass straw as um, mulch material. However, the ryegrass straw holds on to seeds. So what I didn't really realize is that um, after big rains, the ryegrass seeds are gonna sprout. And I guess that's not really ideal, but we are taking that as a teachable moment this year. Um, here we have our tomato varieties um, with a couple different trellising techniques. This is called the Florida weave because you take the string and weave it around each plant and then as the plant is growing you can add another layer and weave it around, back, and then it hold, props up the tomato so that it can continue growing and holding on to the heavy fruit. Um, another trellising technique is using these cages. Um, this circle one, for example, is not my favorite kind of cage because the spokes sort of turn into each other. It can be kind of difficult to get into the ground. But these squares work great because you can fit your hand in well to do any pruning um, or picking of the tomatoes, and they also hold into the ground really well. Um, moving on, we have all American seed selection um, flowers grown right here. And then Right here we have some uh, zucchini. These are not found on the All-American Seed Selection website, but we just wanted to grow some zucchini so we can conduct some research and donations on that as well. Um, moving on, we have watermelon. This is called the Mini Love Watermelon. Um, it's known for its small size. You can see it gets, stays pretty small, so I don't know. Good for a small family, I guess. Um, these are the golden gold watermelons. They've got a gold exterior and they actually are gold on the inside as well and they have a really sweet flavor. Another variety of watermelon that we have is called the Mambo. And these are well liked because they have a high germination rate um, compared to other watermelon. So, right here we have some potatoes growing. Now, typically, potatoes can be grown from a tuber, which is just a slice of the potato um, put into the ground, and then that sprouts right from the t potato slice. These ones we actually did start from seed, though. Um, as you can see, they're also mounded. So when you, as the potato is growing, you want to make sure that you're mounding soil over it so that the uh, vegetable stays covered. Um, behind the potatoes, we've got some beans growing. We have Seychelles and Rattlesnake on the other side. And along with those beans, we have beans on this side as well. Some more Rattlesnake and then Monte Gusto behind those. And in these beans, what we decided to use for mulching material is just cut up uh, 
leaf matter. And this is actually my favorite kind of mulching material because it doesn't hold on to very much seed typically. I haven't weeded this since it was put down. And as you can see, there's just a few weeds. So, yep, that's my favorite. <laughs> and then behind the beans, we have some sweet corn growing. Um, sweet corn is germinated from this top tassel. These seeds will fall down into these spots and um, it germinates that way and grows a vegetable right there. That being said, corn is very common to be cross germinated. So seeds from the corn all the way over there on that field behind the grapes, if those seeds come over here and fall into here, um, we'll be getting field corn in this and not sweet corn. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're planting. Right here, we have some garlic growing. Um, garlic, this garlic was started from cloves, um, and we actually put the cloves into the ground in the fall. So to get a nice, large-sized bulb, you wanna start them in the fall, let them grow through the winter, and then actually right now is when they can be harvested. Then you can see you got a nice-sized, beautiful bulb. And then on the top, you can see uh, zoom in for this. You can see there's some, I don't know, ripped off part on the plant. So there were some scapes, some twirly scapes growing on top of these. Um, we ripped those off so that the garlic can fo focus its energy into growing the bulb. Um, and then, yeah, those can be eaten as well. So right here we have some cucumber growing. Um, this is a vine crop, that's why we have it growing um, on this trellis as well. And then as it was growing, we could take some of these vines, wrap them around, and then it'll grow up. And that helps sort of space the plant out a little bit more to prevent any um, uh, molding or any disease spreading. Right in front of the cucumber, we have some sandy lettuce. I think that's the variety. One second. <laughs> yep, sandy lettuce. Um, and the sandy lettuce did not do very well this year. Um, we're guessing it's because of our soil type. Lettuce typically likes um, a really wet soil. We have really sandy soil here, um, and it doesn't hold on to moisture very well. And in front of the lettuce, we have some radish which most of them were already harvested. This was full, but left one just so you could see how large they can get. Um, this might be a little bit overgrown, giving the radish maybe a little bit more of a spongy flavor, but it still tastes really good. Okay, over here we have some more tomatoes with just some more um, trellising techniques. Something cool with tomatoes is that there are indeterminate and determinate varieties. So what that means is that um, the indeterminate varieties, they continue growing and vining up and in the right conditions, they can actually grow for years um, and get really thick, really long. Um, these are all indeterminate varieties. They just can't grow through the winter, obviously. Um, and then determinate varieties, those are more of a um, bush variety. They're, um, they're bred to stop growing at a bush size and then you can harvest all at once and the plant is done. Right next to our tomatoes, we have some peppers. Um, peppers are another plant that cross-germinate um, cross really well, like the corn and tomatoes as well. Um, so something you can do to prevent that is put um, a trellis cage around it, knock it into place, and then that prevents any pollen from other um, pepper varieties from being cross-germinated into this variety. And then seeds can be saved from this variety. And then you know that you're getting the same seed variety that you planted. Um, it's not gonna change on you like it would if a bee, for example, took pollen from this pepper and germinated this pepper with it. All right. And then in our pepper plot, we also have some beets in between some of the ryegrass weeds you can see. Um, and we've got some more beets planted over here as well. So right here is a really good 
good looking beet variety. This one germinated really well um, compared to our other varieties. Um, these are also, the beets are not AAS. This is um, associated with a graduate research project looking at germina germination rates of these beet varieties. So that brings me to the end of my tour and thanks for following me in the garden. Thank you.